All right. The social aspect of the status of women in Islam. And we have a quote here. Oh, mankind, reverence your guardian Lord who created you from a single person. Created of like nature, his mate, then scattered countless men and women. Fear Allah, through whom you demand your mutual rights and reverence the womb that bore you. I've never been bored by one before. <laughs> I was born of one, but I've never been bored by any. Sorry, had to go there. Uh, for Allah ever watches over you. And that's Surah 4, verse 1. You know, I'd like to point something out because I missed an opportunity. I planted this like four years ago. It's a fig tree. It's a white fig. These leaves are very coarse and irritating. I can't imagine making a diaper out of them. And the sap, it's this white sap that is really caustic. And actually could, you know, burn your skin. But you're going to put that on your junk? <laughs> like Adam and Eve did? I think the only thing that proves is that, that the fruit they picked was probably a fig. A forbidden fig. How about that? Because why go to a different fig, you know, a different fruit tree to get leaves to cover your junk and end up picking these, which are, you hear that? Sandpaper. <laughs> anyway, sorry to be off topic here. The social aspect. Women have as much right to education as men do. Almost 14 centuries ago, Prophet Muhammad declared that the pursuit of knowledge is incumbent on every Muslim, male and female. This declaration was very clear and was largely implemented by Muslims throughout history. Islam elevated the position of women in society and treated them on an equal footing with men, and to some cases, as a mother, for instance, clearly gave them precedence over men. Thus, when a man asked Prophet Muhammad, who is most entitled to be treated with my best companions, my best companion, companionship by me. Somebody really said that? that is, that's a sentence that came out of a human being's mouth at some time in history, huh? Hey, the last prophet. Glad I finally got to meet you. Uh, I should ask you a question. <laughs> Who is most entitled to be treated with my best companion, companionship by me? Definitely loses something in the translation. The prophet replied, your mother. The man asked, who is next? The prophet replied, your mother. The man asked, a fourth time, who is next? The prophet then replied, your father. I think the prophet was fucking with you, but it is true that, you know, in most cases, you should respect mom. If you have the right kind of mom. I mean, some people aren't so lucky, but uh, I think most of the time, yeah, I agree. You know, hey, didn't like my dad at all. 
growing up because he was going through that Vietnam shit and he do wouldn't talk about it. And so, yeah, that didn't work out so good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I always wonder why he got jumpy when a plane flew over. But anyway, um, but turned out to be an awesome guy, and I'm so glad because I used to think bad things. Because, you know, got to share things with people, you know, especially your family. Uh, on another occasion, when a man came to the prophet and expressed a desire to join a military expedition, the prophet asked him if he had a mother. When he replied that he had, a real conversation. It's really happened. And the prophet advised him, stay with her. Her paradise is at her feet. How does mom feel about that? Maybe she's done enough for you already. <laughs> As daughters, women have a right to just an equitable treatment from their parents. The prophet gave, gave glad tidings to those who did not insult their daughters or favored sons over daughters. A woman has the right to accept or reject marriage proposals. Glad somebody put that in writing, so... Oh, I have to do that. Glad somebody said something. <laughs> yeah. A little obvious there, don't you think? You know, if you're a human person, you have the right to agree to shit and disagree with stuff, too. And all that. It's called individuality. It's all It's all good. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Paradise at your mom's feet. Can you imagine somebody at your feet all the time? <sighs> A woman has the right to accept or reject marriage proposals, and her consent is a prerequisite to the validity of the marriage contract. A marriage is based on mutual peace, love, and compassion. Dr. James Badwai, a Canadian Islamic scholar, states in his book, Ginger equality in Islam. The husband is responsible for the maintenance, protection, and overall leadership of the family within the framework and consultation of consultation and kindness. The mutuality and complementary uh, complementarity of husband and wife does not mean subservience by either party to the other. The Prophet Muhammad helped with household chores. Although the responsibilities he bore and the issues he faced in the community were immense. I suppose so. The responsibility of maintaining social and moral values lies in both men and women. Both must refrain from all deeds and gestures that might stir the passions of people other than their legitimate spouses or cause evil suspicions of their morality. Because, yeah, some countries, they you get the 
they bury up to the neck, and then people get to throw rocks at your head until you're dead. I mean, in civilized countries, they do that. Just everyone's got a different meaning, a different idea what that means, I guess. You know, <laughs> that old time religion, good enough for me. Yeah. All right. Women are entitled to freedom of expression just as men are. Among the early Muslims, women participated in public life, especially in times of emergencies. It is reported in the Quran and in history that women have not only expressed their opinion freely, Try and stop them, right? <laughs> Forget about it. But also argued and participated in serious discussions with the prophet himself. I think Joseph Smith went to similar problems, you know? Doesn't matter how high up, you know? Yeah, poor prophets. It is reported uh, it is reported in the Quran and in the history and in history that women not only expressed their opinion freely but also argued and participated in serious discussions with the Prophet Muhammad himself, as well as other Muslim leaders. They were not shut because uh, behind iron bars are considered worthless? Well, that's nice, but I mean, do they have an equal vote even today? I don't know. Do they? I hear some kind, some places, you know, it's like a woman is like a half of a man or a third or a four. I don't even know. I forget. I, I hope that's all old news and nobody does that anymore, but you know, I mean, we could can't get the ERA, ERA passed here. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. I guess, I don't know. Maybe some shit is just unfixable. Who knows? But at least Muhammad tried. Anyway, more to come. Um, this one's kind of interesting, though. Uh, let's see. Yeah. We could finish this.